jump and pull up, guys. A couple things about this is the setup. The most of ball does not need to be right in front of the pull-up bar. It needs to be a little bit forward because your, your pull-up movement is going to be more of an angle with this particular exercise. So you're going to be hitting that power zone on the BOSU. If you look down there, you'll see that label. And then when you set up, you want to be your wrist or on the bar that you're going to be doing the pull-up on. If you're here and you're just grabbing it, you're going to be locking those elbows out, putting a lot of stress in there that you don't want. So, And if you're here, you can't find one that's tall enough, you can just buckle the knees a little bit in your setup and adjust for that. Now, super important that you tap the BOSU. You don't jump on the BOSU, even though it's called a jump a jump and pull up, you're just tapping that thing lightly. It's gonna give you a little boost and absorb some of that shock, and you're pulling for most of the movement. It's, 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 you know, if I was gonna put a percentage on it, it's like 30% jump, 70% pull. So if your back muscles aren't getting tired when you're doing this exercise, you're not doing it right. So make sure that you're leaning back a little bit, that boost is in front of you, right hand position, you tap, and then you finish out with a pull, and you're getting your chin or the knuckles. One way you can advance this is widen up the grip for some of my guys. Lean back and then get your chest to the bar. That's one way that you can get that back a little bit more activated if you need to make it more challenging. But tap and pull should be working your back muscles, a little bit of calves. Make sure you're doing that properly.